Okay, so I just got these Russian axes from uh, some military surplus company. Um, but you don't really want this straight edge. I don't really like a straight edge on my axe. They don't chop as well. And so I'm going to grind off the edge, resharpen it how I like it, and then give this axe a test. Um, so here it is, I've marked how I'm going to cut it. So what you wanna do is measure your ax head. I got, mine's 150 millimeters, 15 centimeters, six inches about. And I'm gonna mark it in three places, or in two places. Divide, divide it into thirds. On the top of the ax, I'm gonna measure in one and a half centimeters. Chook, chook. And on the bottom, I'm gonna measure in one centimeter. Then you connect those lines. That'll give me the cutting edge that I want. So let's get to grinding. Now when you grind it, you want to have water on hand because you don't want to ruin the temper on your axe, mess up the metal. Um, so I'm going to fire it up and grind it. nice and cool it's already a better looking better looking uh, blade profile on there when you grind it you know you just grind straight against the grinder you don't want to start by putting the edge on there because then you will overheat the the uh, blade and mess up the temper so that's what I'm doing. And there you go. I think that's what I'll go with. So now, I like, uh, you can see it kind of, how I've rounded this edge. Another thing I'm thinking about doing is maybe making it a light, a little bit lighter by taking a bit out here, making it sort of a bearded axe. But uh, I like to file, grind my axes from just one side, sharpen it from one side. It makes it easier when you're doing fine work like this to keep a nice, to kind of plane and make ni do nice work with it. And when you're chopping, it bites into the wood and sinks your axe in. Uh, it's what the Avenki do. It's what I've gotten used to while chopping. And so it's what I'm going to put on this axe before I give it its test. One thing I've found about Russian axes is uh, they vary greatly in quality so you might get from the same year same mark you might get one axe that has really good steel you might get another one that you know bends and just isn't isn't good so so you kind of got to test them see how it works uh, I remembered then I think it was called Coleman's military surplus is where I got these it was 40 bucks which 
in the states that's a fair price i like i don't want to pay too much for an axe because it's a something i want to use and not be afraid to not be afraid to use so, <laughs> so, so uh there you go finished product you got it lightened up right here you want to make sure when you grind out here that you don't have any like uh, sharp notches in or anything because that could be a weak point but uh, it's a little lightened it could be a, be a little bit better of a hiking axe uh, there you go ready for some use So there it is, the new grind from one side. Ping. So what I'm doing here is I like to put my axe heads on like this as opposed to in through the top because then you don't need a wedge and your axe head will never fly off. So what I'm doing is Bang it down. Go as far as you can. It'll start cutting into the wood. And then back it off. And see it ends up with a little mark here and you just sand this off each time you do that you'll go a little higher and until you get it to the top so then I'll just sand it And off all the marks here and I'll show you one more time.
as you do that, it goes farther and farther up, but you'll see how tightly it hugs to the handle. And once it's up here, you just leave it fatter on top and your axe head will never fly off. said available from that Coleman's military surplus which I got to say they did a real shoddy job I got it and the head was on upside down for one the handles are a good length but they need they need some work uh, I flipped all the heads over of course what I would like to do what I like better is putting the axe head on from below and stopping it up here so that it uh, never flies off. Of course, with this one I have a wedge, but it'll do. Uh, what else? Oh, I, it's also, I usually like a good seven hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's about the right length for what I like. Uh, there you go. You got your Sharpening it from one side, like I said, allows you to do this kind of work a lot better. Because it kind of holds your, pulls your blade in to the wood, so you're not, it's not like popping out as much. It allows you to do real fine carpentry. Just kidding. But as much as an axe allows for fine carpentry, Again, these are these are utilitarian axes, meant to be used, beat up, handles broken, remade. Feel free to grind it, customize it, do what you want. Uh, so I like about a Russian axe is it's made to be used, not looked at. You'll find in the woods that, I mean, it's ninety percent the way you use it and 10% the tool. Uh, so I don't want to typically spend a ton of money on on an axe unless, you know, maybe you want one really nice one. But I end up if finding out when I do things like that, I end up always grabbing my beater upper because it's the one I feel most comfortable using. And this would fill that roll nicely if you need a little a little axe and you want to mess around with it a bit because again it might come with the head upside down <laughs> so there I've uh, made three axes this one I put on sat the way I like it on the handle this one I made a little lightened version and this is just your standard but as I was doing it I figured I'd show you how Russians can tell whether it's good steel or not. You'd think it'd all be the same. They're all the same year, same brand. But look, hear that sound? Not very good. Not very good. You need this one. Hear that ring? That's, that's how you can tell good steel versus bad steel on an ax. Want that? This'll be the best one.